Last year I did a review on Sansi 150 watt equivalent LED household lights. These funky looking little donut things, which are really good and they're actually still working perfectly fine. A year later, no flicker, no nothing. They're beautiful, no discoloration on the lenses. And then probably about five months ago, I did a review on an outdoor light from Sansi and that was 27 watt pulling, so it's probably about yeah, the equivalency of like a 300 watt floodlight and i'll post that video as well somewhere up here if you never saw that before well they reached out to me again and they said they have an upgrade for this this was a 150 watt equivalent and this one is a 250 watt equivalent and the only thing that's really changed on the label is let's see here instead of 18 watts for the old bulb what it actually pulls this one pulls 27 watts um this one i think puts out 2000 lumens yeah, 2,000 lumens. This one puts out 3,500 lumens. It's still 5,000 Kelvin. Uh, it's a cool white light. Uh, this one is a not dimmable version. They do make a dimmable version as well. They asked me if I could do a dimmable, but I don't have anything that actually dims in my house, so I couldn't test it. So I asked them to send me non-dimmable ones, so that's why I can check them out. Uh, CRI, still of 80, and the base is an E26, regular American style screw. So let's open it up real quick. And you got the little tiny information packet. And you can start seeing the unit here. That was to secure it. And yeah, here it is. This one's got a lot more LEDs wrapped around in three rows. Still has the regular green connector type of deal. And it's almost the same size. Yeah, it's ever so. Let me hold it so you can actually see. Yeah, I say this one's probably like an extra quarter inch longer, but. Yeah, this one's definitely a little heavier. Probably has more ceramic heat sink in this one. Because remember, they're using ceramic in here. It's probably why this thing runs so well. So let's take it down to the bench, tear into it a little bit, and then we'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison and see what the difference really is. So over here we have the original 150-watt equivalent light that I did the review on before. And here's the new 250-watt equivalent light. And we look at the model numbers. The model numbers are almost the same, except that the old model is a VE26, whereas the new model is a WE26. The rest of the numbers, this is an 18 watt, and this one is a 27 watt. The rest of the numbers, 50, 80, 0, I have no clue what the heck that stands for. Um, this one says 18 watts, 5,000 Kelvin, 2,000 lumens for the original. This one is 27 watts, 5,000 Kelvin and 3,500 lumens, so significantly brighter. And the rest of it, AC 120, 60 hertz, and E26, they're the same on each one. It's an E26 connector. If we flip them on over, they're exactly the same. Now, they both use a ceramic inside piece. Like right here, you can see the ceramic sticking out. Here, you can see the ceramic sticking out here. It'll be more apparent as we actually tear this one down. If we look at the top of the units, the original just had a straight airflow through it, which was great for cooling. Now this one, the ceramic is actually wrapping around. This is actually ceramic fins. It's got this extra little grate right there, which then goes through the electronics to help cool it as well. So now this one is definitely made more for being a floodlight, as you can easily tell. The original 150 watt one is all frosted, so you can't really see the LEDs directly inside. Whereas this one, we have three rows of LEDs very easily seen, and this is really meant to be a floodlight. Now this bottom row, it has a very, very thin, I'm not even sure the camera can pick it up if I hit the right angle. It's probably like three millimeter thick diffuser band right here. Then this one's a lot thicker. That one you can definitely see on camera. Actually, I don't even know if you can even see it on camera. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Now, you, oh, you know what? You can look right here on the side. See, now you get the one millimeter or one or two millimeter diffusion band and a lot thicker over here and a thicker over here for each ring. So it's not fully diffused and that's only a very basic diffusion as well. So this is really meant to be a floodlight. And I take it these bands are probably just to spread out the light just a little bit. Now, of course, they also have marked on here forbidden to be used in enclosed luminaires. Do not use with dimmers. They do make a dimming model of this. I asked for the non-dimming model because I have no way of actually testing the dimming model right now. So they do make a dimming model version of it. And there's their branding on it. And that's about it, really. 
So I think it's actually time to start tearing into it. Okay, so I got a few different spudging tools, so hopefully we can pry this on open. So give me a few minutes. I'll probably end up doing a time lapse of me trying to open this thing up because I'm not exactly sure how it pops off. I mean, I see a few clips sitting up top here, which are currently out of focus. A few clips down below. So let's see if we can work on those first and see if we can get this off. Okay, so that just comes off real nice and easy. And first thing we can see, two power wires going through the ceramic coming out to the uh, LEDs. Definitely underneath this whole thing. <laughs> Flying splodger. Got it. Okay. Hidden clips. These little white clips are what's holding it. Almost there. Aha. We are separated. Okay. So inside, this is all ceramic. This whole thing is the ceramic with the LEDs lined up, printed directly onto the ceramic substrate. Two, uh, two wires coming all through. Now the circuit board, let's see here. A good portion of it has been potted, so we're not gonna be able to identify much of it. I guess it definitely means it's basically made for an outdoor floodlight if you want to, because they have all the electronics basically protected. Except for the very, very top of it which I guess they need to keep uh, open for soldering through hole components. I mean, you got a bunch of, get my flashlight again here. There you go, you can see inside, there's a bunch of surface mount components and it's gonna be very hard to identify anything cause it is really covered. And you got like one little MOSFET right there, a few other little pieces that you can actually can identify. And on the opposite side, there's a heck of a output capacitor Although I can't quite get the reading. Just some other capacitors inside there. I see a bridge rectifier all the way down to the very bottom. Uh, probably high voltage capacitors. There's your transformer right there. Other than that, I mean, it's a really solid build. And, okay, they even put a little bit like insulating rubber on the two connectors here. The two wires that go on up here, yeah, there's like this extra rubber. So they even tried insulating that as well which is very nice so if something is this hard to take apart it's probably built pretty well mm, yeah definitely okay so now we actually have everything exposed and yeah, this is like an actual printing right onto the ceramic itself and that's one of the traces so let's see here. Where's the traces actually run over to? Right here, right there. They even covered this and protected that connector, so it's gonna be kind of hard for me to probe a voltage. Yeah, I don't even think I'll be able to probe a voltage out of that. Uh I can probe a voltage out of here, so I'm gonna screw it into a connector. We can see at least what voltage it runs at. Oh, the other piece of plastic's coming out now. That's just controls the guide wires and your venting. Now, I want to zoom in on the actual LED elements themselves to actually show you how good of a solder joint this is. Even on ceramic. I mean, this had to be soldered directly on the ceramic. There's no way I could have done that. And this looks even better than some circuit boards I've seen, especially coming out of China. And look how good this is. I mean, they're not going anywhere. Nope. And then you got the embedded traces that I have no clue how the heck they did this. You see there's definitely a one second delay for it to actually warm up first. Oh God, you're not even gonna be able to see the screen at all. Okay, so the LED's on again. This way, hopefully I can show you that this thing runs on extremely high voltage. And remember, we're only running 120 volts DC here. And usually, if you take a bridge rectifier directly through, um, the output, the DC output that's choppy as ever on that is usually about 170 volts because you take a peak to peak on the AC waveform. Well, this thing's, apparently boosting it too there we go yeah I lost it 265 volts that's insane okay so I've locked the exposure on my camera so it really shouldn't change at all and I've also turned off the crazy you can't see right now that big giant floodlight so this way it's a little dimmer in the room so let's do a comparison test these are 
what are they? They are 150 milliamp, nine watt. I think I originally got these from either Walmart or um, Ikea or something like that. 60 Hertz, 800 lumens. I think these are like 60 watt equivalent bulbs, LED. And there's not much to them really. Actually here, just leave one in. Okay, and these are a warm white light. So that's a little different. So let's now put in our original donut 150 watt. You can see the difference there. Woohoo! Now you can already see the difference of that just on the screen itself. Thank God the uh, exposure is locked so you can actually see this. So yeah, it's, it's a little bright. Uh, let's unscrew the 60 watt and let's put the new 250 in there just for comparison purposes as well. Big bad boy here. Wow, check that out. That's insane. There's one. There's the other. Yeah. I can definitely tell more so on me than the camera. I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but since this isn't as frosted as much as we already saw the the cover for the LEDs, it definitely projects light even more. Even though it's 250 watts, it is more power, but it even projects more. So this works even good in a regular standard lamp. So let's switch this over again and show you, even though it's considered a fog light, you can use it in a regular lamp just like I use this one. So let's switch that over real quick. So here's the 150 watt Sansi in a regular lamp. It does perfectly fine. So let's unscrew this one. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And let's put the 250 in there as well. This is where you're probably definitely going to see the difference. Yeah, that's definitely brighter. So, and if you get a lighter lampshade, like this is kind of a dark one. If you get a lighter lampshade, it really actually fills up a room real nicely, like in my living room. So, that's my quick review. It's still another good product from them. It definitely sure beats the old CFLs. And... Yeah, you could use the cheap little 60 watt ones, which I do around the house. Um, but these only cost like a couple dollars each, and you get what you pay for. So they're great for just general illumination here and there. But if you really want something that's going to last a long time, you don't have to worry about it eventually going bad, and you really want to get some good light of high CRI, yeah. You can't beat these. You really can't. So I will put links down in the description for my previous videos. Uh, and also if they give me any discount codes for this, that will be down in the description as well. So if you have any questions or comments, of course, also leave them down below the description and below the video. Thumbs up, please. And I'll see you next video.